The desert is ruthless, but nothing is more savage than a dinner at my house. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Rafael and I'm here to review episode 6 of The Real Housewives Whose Best Friend Flew Out From Boston All The Way Out To Dubai To Get Told To Shut The Fuck Up At A Dinner Table Of Dubai. We start the episode off with Caroline Brooks shopping around for furniture for her house because she wants to add some color to it. She's accompanied by her son Adam as well as Chanel Ayan who shows up in this beautiful yellow look. I mean she was wearing a yellow dress down to the floor with these white gloves up to her elbow, this yellow hoodie, and her hair was also yellow. The whole look was probably one of my top 3, top 5 looks of Ayan on this entire season and again just like I said before she continuously gives us variety after variety after variety every single episode she never looks the same way that we last saw her in the last scene in one episode and to me that's pretty cool so then Caroline Brooks she's shopping around she's looking at this pink couch that they're sitting on and she's like you know what I think I'm gonna buy this but this is enough color because I think I'm gonna keep everything else pretty simple with the white chairs so then she also starts talking about Adam her son in her confessional and I feel like this was kind of like a premonition of what was to come later on in the episode at her house with Sarah and her two friends. She talks about Adam and she's like, you know, Adam, he's my world. He's my everything. And I'm raising him the same way that my mom raised me. And I'm proud of the way I turned out because of how my mom raised me. So I'm hoping that my son also turns out the same way because of everything that I'm teaching him. And I'm like, well... We'll see how this conversation turns out again later on towards the end of the episode, right? She also continues on by saying, oh, Adam is her world. He's her everything. But at the same time, she knows how to be, you know, lenient and how to put her foot down. So she takes Ayan to the back of a store, right? They're talking, they're looking around and everything. And she tells Ayan, Ayan, two of my friends from Boston, they're coming over to Dubai and I want you to possibly meet them. Maybe if we don't fall out by then too. I'm having a pool party and I'm inviting everybody. So I'm inviting you. So are you available? So Ayan is just like, mm, I'm going to have to look at my my calendar. I'm not sure. I'm booked up. I think I could make some space for your party. She also goes on to say, uh, I don't know what I'm going to wear to your pool party though. <laughs> I'm like, oh, please, as if you're, you're going to have an issue with that. And then she also goes on to say, uh, Brooks, I think I honestly might show up to your party in my birthday suit. <laughs> you know what's the worst part, too? That I believe that. I believe that Ayan will show up to a pool party completely naked. Or if not naked, she'll show up with a big-ass diamond choker and, like, some lacy crystallized panties and some sunglasses and say, I'm here. <laughs> and still make it look fashionable. So then Brooke starts talking about Ayan and her confessional and saying how annoying she is. She is so annoying. Ayan is beyond annoying. And I'm like, you're calling her annoying, but yet here you are face to face with her, shopping around with her and inviting her to your pool party. Like, which one is it? She continues on by saying, me and Ayan, we constantly fight every single day. And I'm like, okay, that's a, there's too many red flags here in this friendship. <laughs> She goes on to say, well, the best part of their friendship is that, yeah, they may fight every single day, but at the end of the day, they're still friends and they managed to make up by dinner time. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Last time I checked, friendships don't really work that way. And even if you do make up by the end of the day, who wants to be in a friendship that toxic that you constantly have to, uh, you know, bump heads with somebody every single day? I'm assuming for some petty shit, too. It's not like it's something serious. And then, you know, you, you constantly get on each other's nerve. You call each other names and then you're OK by the end of the day. Like, that is not how friendships work or at least not in my world. Like the second that you call me anything out of my name, we're done. <laughs> so I don't know how both of them managed to do it because as of now in the real world, Ayan and uh, Brooks, they're no longer friends because I think they're on bad terms. Uh, Brooks, she was talking bad about Ayan on Watch What Happens Live and saying that she was a hater, I believe. She's also on Twitter saying, oh, since they're about to film the reunion soon, that Ayan, she better bring it to the reunion because she's also going to bring it back to her. And I'm like, okay, at what point is, is enough enough with them in the relationship? Though? Like, Because when are they going to take it too far to the point where they can no longer be friends anymore or are they just constantly in this toxic cycle of oh we could call each other this we could call each other that but at the end of the day we're gonna be friends like no we head over to this hotel which for a second i misread the name of the hotel at the bottom of the screen where it said the raffles hotel for a second i thought that it said the Raphael hotel i'm like wait a minute i don't think i owe a hotel in dubai and if i do i want my check <laughs> So then Caroline Strawberry, she shows up with Sergio and her parents and she's freaking out because she's like, well, my parents are finally in town for the wedding. Like this is becoming so surreal. Like the wedding is actually going to happen. I can't run away from Sergio anymore. <laughs> so then the reason why they're at this hotel is because she's a 50 year old influencer. So she has to influence. She has to put all, you know, this hotel, like everything, how it looks on the inside, like the whole experience. She has to put it on social media because she is the ambassador for this hotel. And I'm like, that's pretty impressive. I wonder how much money she gets for that because the 
hotel was huge and you could tell that it has like this old style look to it like it's very not modern but like very old school at least that's what it gives me and it's very spacious too so they're looking around the hotel you know it looks really nice it looks really creepy too on top of that because imagine at nighttime just walking around in this big ass hotel and you're taking a shower and it's just like oh, it's just too much space for me like no 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 I just I needed something a little bit more secluded so then the parents they go somewhere else Caroline Strawberry she continues telling us a little bit more of her backstory with her parents she goes on to say that her and her relationship with her mom I mean her mom doesn't really like talking about emotions or feelings or anything really like that and her dad I mean yeah she has a good relationship with him but she's not really all cuddly and emotion and uh, oh <laughs> oh shit Caroline Strawberry <laughs> oh I am so sorry y'all <laughs> I choked <laughs> Caroline Strawberry I didn't mean anything relax like, oh my goodness hold on Wow, okay, I, never mind. We're just gonna move on to the next scene. <laughs> So she also continues on by saying, you know, she's not really cuddly like that with people. And I, to me, honestly, it just seems so sad. I think that the reason why I think it's so sad and she's like living such a sad life is because I'm the complete opposite of what Caroline Strawberry is. I'm very emotional. If anything, I'm way too emotional and way too passionate about things. And I like expressing feelings to people every single day. So, you know, to, to hear Caroline Strawberry say that she doesn't even express that with her parents, that's pretty sad. Like, I can't imagine not ever talking to my parents or at least telling them, like, I love you or expressing how I feel about them or expressing myself to them in general. Like, I just can never picture myself not doing that. So it must be just a sad life to live in her shoes. And I'm not saying that Caroline or anybody just has to walk around every single day giving everybody hugs and just spilling your emotions out to them and crying every five seconds. I'm not saying that, but damn, her cold demeanor is just way too, too cold. Like I get it if you don't want to show too much emotion, but at least show a little ounce of it, at least to your husband or to those that you really care for in your life. Like I get it. Straight Strangers is one thing, you know, that you don't you don't owe anybody emotions, but damn, Sergio, he's just doing everything in his power to get something out of you, but yet you continue giving him like the ice queen treatment. And to me, that's pretty sad. She goes on to say, oh, it's pretty ironic too, because Sergio, he's the complete opposite of me as well, because he's so emotional and you know, he likes to really like be cuddly and all over me, but I'm just not really feeling it. So her and Sergio, they go into one room. And again, she always seems so annoyed about Sergio every single time that they're together. I mean, he's just like, oh, here's the wedding ring. And she's just like, oh yeah, put that, put that in the bag. Put that in the bag. Don't lose it. Don't fucking lose it or else I'm divorcing you. Yeah. Stop breathing. Stop. You're breathing way too hard. Stop. Did you just blink? Stop blinking. <laughs> Like, that's how she's talking to him. So then he sits down and he's just like, um, so, um, you know, babe, but like, are, are we gonna have tiki tiki tonight? And tiki tiki is another cold word for sex. And Caroline, again, she doesn't even want to touch the man. And I'm like, damn, Caroline, you don't even want to do that either. I mean, she's just like, uh, no, I, I just, no, not today. I, I, just, I think that we could continue our relationship and our marriage without actually doing that. So then Sergio was just like, no, I, w I wanna have Tiki Tiki. Like, and I'm just like, Tiki Tiki, first of all, why are we calling it that? This is not Donkey Kong. <laughs> It reminds me of that game Temple Run, the one that you have to run away from monkeys, where you hear Tiki Tiki in the background. That's what I hear every time Sergio says it. So Caroline, she's like, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to have Tiki Tiki, Taka Taka, Toko Toko, Tuku Tuku. I'm not having anything with you. I'm sorry. And I'm like, damn, Caroline, I mean, how is their honeymoon going to be like? Because what? Are they just going to go on their honeymoon and what are they going to do? Stare at the wall, play bingo, play cards? Like, what are you two going to even do at your honeymoon? What are you going to do in this marriage? <laughs> If you don't want to touch him, you don't want to kiss him, you don't want to be affectionate, you don't want to suck his dick, what do you want to do, Caroline? Like, what do you want to do besides play with your dogs that, that piss on your bed and you just lay in it? What do you want to do? Like, please let us know because it's pretty sad. I mean, if you're not willing to do anything with Sergio, you know, physically, then, I mean... I'm willing to sacrifice myself and... Oh, no, 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 I, I, no, I forgot. No, I belong to Lisa and Rich. So I'm sorry, I'm not getting in between this relationship right here between both of them. <laughs> So that, that was that. But I will say that Caroline uh, Strawberry, she looks nice in red lipstick. I think that that's your look, Caroline Strawberry. If we got anything out of this entire scene, is that red is your color lip. <laughs> we head over to Nina's place and we all remember where she lives in that fancy building that I said that I personally liked. So she's waiting there for Caroline Strawberry, Lisa, and Ayan because she's inviting them over to have a little luncheon on one of the rooftops, right? So Caroline Strawberry, she's the first one to show up. And as she's making her way to the table, I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on, let me look a little closer. Let me look a little closer. Closer, hold on, no, I, I don't believe this. Let me get my binoculars. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wow, Sergio's not with her. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, Caroline Strawberry. So you do film scenes this season without Sarah Hill being next to you, you know, because he's the new friend of the show or the new housewife for next season, or at least that's what he's trying to do. And I'm like, wow, Caroline Strawberry, kudos to you. I wonder how she managed to do it. She probably lied to him and she was probably like, oh, you know, uh, babe, I'm going to give you some tiki tiki later on tonight if you just let me film this scene with my friends by myself. You promise? Okay, stay here. I'm going to go, okay? <laughs> I believe Lisa's the next one to show up and then Ayan. <sighs> I mean, do I have to say it? Do I have to say it? Because I'm getting annoyed already at this point by how many times I have to say it. Ayan, she showed up looking stunning, beautiful again, beautiful bob cut. She had on this uh, Salt Lake City couture. <laughs> with all of these feathers. I couldn't really tell what the outfit was, but it looks so nice on her. And I'm like, ah, oh, Ayan, so stunning. Like, seriously. So she shows up and it's the, there's some awkward tension at the table because uh, Nina, she's the one that breaks the ice and she starts ordering food for the table. And this is something, again, this is such a pet peeve of mine with her and Brooks, how they never say please or thank you or anything. They just talk to whoever, like whatever. She's just like, can I get French fries? Can I get this? Yeah, yeah, I want French. Make it two French fries. Get two French fries, but make it pronto, like quickly. Like, hurry up. I'm starving. And I'm like, ugh, Nina just, mm, I don't know, Nina just, ugh, you know, it, it just that whole vibe just really rubs me the wrong way. And I don't think I ever noticed that in the other housewives in different cities. I'm not sure if that's just like a Dubai thing. Hopefully not. Hopefully I'm wrong. But they continue, uh, you know, being in awkward silence because obviously Lisa, she has tension with Strawberry. So then Nina, she continues breaking the ice and she's like, Caroline Strawberry, I just want to say that I'm sorry for agreeing with Sarah here. You know, I mean, I just wanted to, you know, let you know that I'm not agree I disagreeing with you. It's just that, you know, I have my own opinion. So then Strawberry is just like, no, it's fine. I usually go around the whole entire table waiting, you know, to see if somebody agrees with me, if they don't agree with me. And I'm just like, uh, okay, so you're looking for validation too, but okay. So she's just like, no, Nina, it's fine. You know, it's just this whole wedding situation. It's just becoming a big thing and I'm just not really here for it. So eventually they talk about the whole situation between her and Lisa and... <sighs> typical white woman. It's like she she looked into her bag of tricks, a bag of white woman tricks. And she was like, um, let me see what I could pull out. Oh, let me call Lisa aggressive. And let me say that I felt attacked by her. And I'm like, how did you feel attacked by her? How was she aggressive? Lisa has not been aggressive this entire season. Not to you, to anybody on this cast. She has not been aggressive with you at all. So I'm like, where are you getting this from? Like, where is the footage that shows that? Because even when they flash back to, you know, the scene between you and her at uh, Nina's party, again, you were the one that was coming at her like that. And you were coming at Sergio as well, like saying, oh, yeah, I hope she's the one that sucks your dick tonight. Isn't that aggressive? So you're pointing her out and you're trying to make her seem like she's some type of monster. And she ambushed you at the party when all she did was say, oh, me and Ayan, we are not on the same team. So don't look at us as like we are like a double package or something. That's all she said. And she didn't even yell at you. She didn't even say it like too tough to you or anything. She said it calmly to you. And now you want to say she's aggressive? <sighs> Strawberry. Okay, so then Lisa's just like aggressive, aggressive. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't say anything like that. Like, you're the one that was disrespecting me and saying the whole, uh, you know, sucking dick comment when I'm married. Like, that is a very inappropriate thing to say. Strawberry, she goes on to blame her British humor. She goes on to say, you know, I have a very dry sense of humor. And that's why it probably came off the wrong way. And I'm like, okay, I mean, no, I mean, again, like you have you said, if you and Lisa were on cool terms and maybe, maybe, maybe you would have joked around and said, oh, uh, Sergio, is she going to suck your dick tonight? Maybe, maybe. It's like a 2% maybe. <laughs> It would have came out as a joke if you were on speaking terms, if you were two, if you were both on the same page. It wasn't the right time to make that type of joke. And even if Lisa and Caroline were good at the party and they never had an issue to begin with, I still don't think that you make that type of joke, Caroline, about your husband and your friend Lisa saying, oh, is she going to suck your dick tonight? Like, I don't know. That's kind of like pushing it a little bit too far. But who knows? She goes on to say that that's her sense of humor. So who knows? So Lisa, she's just like, well, Caroline, you know, I want to put all of this behind us because it's really not that serious. And I want to be on good terms with you and on speaking terms with you because we were friends. And, you know, even though other people have told me things about you and stuff, I still managed to still be your friend. So Strawberry is just like, wait, what do you mean by that? Because that sounds passive aggressive. So Lisa's like, well, you know, the women from Ladies of London, you know, the show that you were on like six, eight years ago, they messaged me on Instagram and they told me to look out for you because they say that you're a snake and, you know, you're an ice queen and stuff. So I'm not sure, but I'm still willing to be your friend. So then they both agreed. They're like, okay, fine. Let's put everything behind us. It's, it is what it is. Let's 
start all over and that's that. And I'm like, okay, so fine. We're all going to be cool with each other for now, right? Until that reunion comes around. <laughs> so then Ayan, she also shared that, oh yeah, by the way, I also speak, speaking of wedding, since you're also getting married to Sergio, I also was supposed to get married to my cousin. And then she went on with that story. And then Strawberry, she was all of us when we found out. She was like, wait, 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 what? <laughs> Your cousin? <laughs> We head over to Sarah's event that she's hosting 60 miles away from Dubai. I believe it's called the Global Citizen Event, something like that. It has to do with ending poverty, right? And Sarah, she's going to be the spokesperson this year. She's invited Ayan. I wish that she would have invited that entire cast to see what they would award to something like this. I felt like this was kind of like a gala type of event, like a ball thing or whatever. But Ayan, she shows up. Do I have to say it? Do I have to say it? I'm not saying it. <laughs> So she shows up, her and Sarah, they're getting their makeup done. Sarah, she looks so beautiful just sitting there, just so angelic, like, while her, she's getting her makeup done. Ayan is telling Sarah, well, you know, I actually followed your advice from the other day, you know, when she had a whole breakdown at her house and she told her that she's going to try to get some therapy because of her childhood with her father. She's like, I actually talked to the psychologist and he actually told me to water some plants and I have some plastic plants at home, but I still water them because it has to bring some type of peace within my life. And I'm like, what? What kind of psychologist is telling you to do this, to water some plastic plants? <laughs> It must have been that therapist from Atlanta, the one that Sheree had come over to her house. <laughs> it was probably the same one. What was his name? Jack Daniels. I, I promise you, it was probably Jack Daniels who Ayan was talking about. So then Sarah, now Sarah, this is where I, I was kind of giving you the side eye just a little bit because I like you. But then she starts telling Ayan, she starts talking to her and she's like, Ayan, you know, I just feel like in this life, you just have to be very given and forgiven. And you just have to be a very strong person. And, you know, I like strawberries and nachos and hamburgers with ketchup and mayo. And sometimes I like french fries as well. And I like a good churro too. And I, sometimes pineapple cake. But I just, I just feel like it's never too late to be a person like me. And I'm like, wait a minute. Now, Sarah, I like you and all, but the second that those words would have came out of your mouth, I would have been like, a person like you? You mean a person who's been divorced twice? <laughs> like, no, don't talk to me like that. Like, oh, you need to be like me. You need to be on my level. I'm holier than thou. No, let's talk about your flaws. Let's talk about your issues. Let's talk about your divorces. Let's talk about the husbands. <laughs> Not the husband, but let's talk about the husbands. <laughs> Because again, Sarah, I like you and all, but it's just like, I don't know. I mean, and I know that she was probably not coming from a bad place of heart or anything, but it's just like, again, who the fuck are you? <laughs> And I say all of that to say this, because I've been in Ayan's position before where people try to give me advice, but it comes off as if they're trying to preach to me or as if they're looking down on me and they have this whole holier than thou mentality. And I, I'm quick to pick up on that vibe. And I tell you to shut the fuck up right away that I don't want to hear it. Save the advice for yourself. And what's crazy is, is it's always the people with the most fucked up lives that want to talk down to people and say, oh, you need to be like me. Like, no, I shouldn't be like you. Your boyfriend is cheating on you for your best friend. Why should I follow you? <laughs> Your boyfriend doesn't even text you good morning every single day. Yeah, you want me to follow you in your footsteps? It's not happening. Absolutely not. So Ayan, as Sarah kept talking and talking and talking, she was kind of pulling like a Dory. I'm like, Sarah, I like you and all, and I still like her, but I hope that she just doesn't talk and talk and talk just to hear herself talk. <laughs> Because I feel like she has, she has a message and then she kind of swerves all over the place with it. And I'm like, okay, I kind of lost track of what you were talking about. Ayan, it looks kill. She was looking at Sarah like, <laughs> like you could tell Ayan just wanted to burst out and say, bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> let's just get to your event and let's go. <laughs> we get to Caroline Brooks pool party and she has both her friends, Brian and Adam from Boston show up as well. And they're both, how you doing? They're both gay. And we finally get this conversation about how Dubai allegedly treats their people of the LGBTQ community by Brooks saying in her confessional, well, yeah, at first Brian and Adam, they were not going to come to Dubai because they heard so many things about how Dubai treats gay people and they were scared. They were not going to come. But then she also goes on to say that, yeah, these are just miscommunications and that they're not necessarily true. But at the same time, Brooks, you didn't say that they were false either. So which one is it? Hmm? 
I wish that we would have had a deeper conversation about this topic specifically because that is something I really want to know. Like, what what are the punishments in Dubai? Like, I've heard things, but I want to hear it from somebody who actually lives there. Ayan, she also goes on in the confessional saying, oh, yeah, Dubai is being so progressive now because 95% of my friends, they're all queer. So, you know, Dubai is being very progressive and moving forward. And I'm like, are they, though? I mean, are they, though? I could be wrong. And maybe, again, it's just my fear of going to Dubai that's stopping me from, like, you know, thinking of it as a progressive city. But I'm not sure caroline strawberry she also says that yeah it's similar i mean it's progressive but it's also not new york city where new york city you could hold hands and kiss whoever you want in public but in dubai it doesn't work like that but again that's as that's as much of the conversation that we got from this subject it was very surfacey level right so then brooks she also gives us a backstory of her friendship with i believe his name was adam and she said that adam was actually there when she gave birth to her own son adam <laughs> And that he had to cut the umbilical cord because her husband missed the birth. And I'm like, what? Like, that was an even bigger reason to divorce. And like, how how much of a trash-ass husband do you have to be to even miss your uh, your child's birth? Like, that is such a shame. She says that her friendship with Adam goes all the way back from childhood. And I'm like, okay, that's cute to know as of now until we get to that dinner scene later on where she just... But anyway, we'll get to that, right? So then everybody starts arriving to the party one by one. We got Lisa, Nina, Ayan, Caroline Strawberry, and the front of the show, Sergio, he shows up. And you know he was probably just like skipping to the scene like, yes, we're going to go film today. We're going to go film today. <laughs> You know, he was so excited to be in front of the camera. So then I believe Ayan, she starts up the conversation with Lisa. And she's like, Lisa, I actually talked up with Sarah the other day. Like, we hung out. And she was being way too preachy to me. Like, she was Jesus or something. <laughs> like, she was talking down to me. And she was basically saying that I had to be a nicer person. And I don't really like that. I feel like the whole thing was just insincere. And Lisa, she was kind of caught off guard. Like, what? Like, Sarah? This is Sarah you're talking about? And I'm like, I mean, again, it's Sarah. I just feel like it was just the wrong time and the wrong words that were coming out of her mouth. And I just feel like she's not really like that. But then again, Sarah, if you really are like that, you're in trouble. <laughs> and I can't do anything for you. <laughs> so then we see Strawberry. <sighs> we finally get a group scene. And what does she do? She just lays down around the pool like... Oh, Sergio, go have fun. I'm like, come on, Strawberry. Do something. Give us something. Like somebody poke her with a stick or something. Like do something. <laughs> So then I believe Sarah, she also called in through the phone and she told Brooks, I'm not going to be able to make it. I just feel like I'm too good for everybody there. I'm going to go preach to somebody else who's going to listen to me. So I'm not going to be there. I'm sorry. Maybe like in two years, I'll be there. And I'm like, oh, come on, Sarah. I kind of wanted to see Sarah interact at a pool party to see how she'll be mingling with everybody else. And I hope that that was like an actual legit excuse that she had like something else to do. And she wasn't just blowing everybody off because she didn't really want to be there. But who knows? Ayan also invited her friends to the pool party. And they're also, how you doing? But there was one that really stood out to me. His name was William, I believe. He had on the brown outfit, and I was just looking at him like, "Hey, William. Hey, how are you? Are you are you ever in the USA? If you are, call me." <laughs> he just looked so handsome, and he barely said anything. All he said was "hello," and look how weak I got. <laughs> So then, meanwhile, Nina, she's over there talking to, I believe, Brooks and Strawberry. And she's telling them about her dad and his condition in the hospital because he's also, he got COVID. And he's really under some critical conditions. And she's going through it right now. She's trying to keep it together. She's like, you know, I feel so bad that I'm not there with him all the time. And it's just like, I feel so sorry that he's going through all of this. They're trying to comfort her. Meanwhile, she goes over there to Lisa and Ayan. Before she could even say anything about her dad's situation, Ayan is just like, Nina, I want to talk to you about the situation that be between me and you and Strawberry. Why? Why did you take her side all of a sudden? And I'm like, where is this coming from? I completely forgot that Ayan and Nina had that conversation like, what, a couple of episodes ago where she called Nina mashed potatoes? <laughs> I completely forgot that Nina kind of switched up on her. And I'm like, I mean, Aya, why are you bringing this up now? Just let it go. Was it really that serious? I, again, I completely forgot about that. So that's why when she brought that up, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm kind of caught off guard too with that. Nina, she was just like, um, well, see, the thing is the situation between me and you right now, I have nothing against you right now. It's just I'm going through a lot right now. Then her voice starts cracking. She starts crying. She starts tearing up. She starts breaking down in front of them. And Aya, she feels terrible because she's like, oh, well, I'm sorry. I should have never brought this up right now. I didn't know what you were going through 
through right now. I'm so sorry. She's trying to comfort her. It was just all ruined, right? It was just a big mess. So then we head back over to Brooks and Strawberry. Brooks, she's telling Strawberry, well, I was actually thinking about sending my son to boarding school in Switzerland. What do you think about this? So then Strawberry, you know we barely get any type of reaction or emotion out of her. So the fact that she like really got up and she stood up in reaction to her, she's like, wait a minute, boarding school, boarding school. What do you mean boarding school? The fact that she reacted that way, that was kind of concerning. And that was a red flag right there, Brooks, that maybe you shouldn't send your son to boarding school, right? So then Strawberry, she's just like, yeah, I don't think that that's a good idea because look how I turned out. I turned out as like a snow queen, like I'm an ice queen. I barely have any type of emotion or relationship with people because of boarding school. You know, my, I went there at such a young age and it kind of ruined me and it made me have like really bad relationships with people and my parents. So I don't really recommend it. Brooks, it's kind of like it went right over her head. She was just like, um... I was going to send him anyway because I barely see him anyway. And I'm like, Brooks, I mean, then again, I don't know much about boarding school or the co or the uh, effects that it has on children or, you know, anybody of the students or anything or the reasons why you even send your children over there. So I'm not sure. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that that would be a smart idea or I don't know. I, I just really guess it's all about like the reasoning behind it, I suppose. But I mean, if I was to tell somebody that and Strawberry was to tell me that, I'll be a little concerned. I will be as a parent, I'll be like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't do this because if somebody who's been through the experience is telling me this maybe i should listen but i mean it is what it is brooks as of now i believe she was tweeting about it last night and she said that her her and her ex-husband they were gonna send him to boarding school because i believe the father he had him enrolled in something or whatever but then they decided not to so as of now he never went to boarding school nor is she going to do that so i mean good job for that so then i believe strawberry she notices that nina is crying over there with ayan and lisa so she tells sergio who's in the pool sergio can you go over there and just eat He's dropped his tea like really quickly like why is she crying so Sergio he's like no I don't want to I want to stay in the pool like I want the camera time on my body come on now I just worked out and did a hundred push-ups this morning for this I wanted to get on the floaty over there oh fine let me go over there <laughs> so then he gets up out of the pool he goes over there just to flex his body in front of Nina and Ayana he's just like wow Nina like you're really going through a lot right now if you ever if you ever need me or my wife, Caroline, who's over there, I believe. Hold on, wait. I think she's over there. She's sitting over there. Do you see her? She's sitting right over there. If you ever see her over there or me, you know, me and her are always here for you. Hey, Ayan. Hey, Lisa. Yeah, we're always here for you, okay? Do you like my pecs? <laughs> I'm like, Sergio, sit your ass down or go back into the pool. What are you doing? <laughs> so then we see Caroline Strawberry and her daughter Jasmine meeting up with her father. And this felt like a business meeting to me, the way they both just even approach each other. Like, hey, dad. Hey, daughter. How are you? Let's get down to business. Like, that's the type of vibe that we got at the table. <laughs> So then she tells us a couple of more red flags in her and Sari Hill's relationship because she goes on to say that his dad actually tried to pay him off to separate himself away from Caroline Strawberry. And I'm like, what? And you still stayed, Caroline? Like, no, absolutely not. That is way, 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 way too many red flags in this relationship. And it's only been what? Six episodes? <laughs> Like, it's ridiculous at this point. Like, no. And I also wonder, why? Why does the dad not like Caroline Strawberry? Like, did she do something to them? Like, what happened? Like, is it the age difference that they don't like? Like, what's going on here? She also says that the mom also cried four times, not out of happiness, but because she was, like, sad that they were together. And I'm like, but why, though? I don't understand it. Like, there must be something much more deeper in this story that we're not understanding that Caroline Strawberry is probably not, you know, putting out there or whatever. Like, I'm pretty sure her hands are not squeaky clean in this situation as well. She goes on to say that when she met Sergio, he was 24, but he was lying to her, saying that he was 31. So that was the first baby red flag right there in their relationship. He was lying to her already about his age out of all things. She also goes on to say, if anything, his parents should be happy that he's with a woman like me who's already up there in age. And you know, she's already been there, done that. She's not really doing anything crazy or wild. And she's keeping their son out of trouble. And I'm like, so what exactly do you want, Caroline Strawberry? Do you want a husband or do you want a man child to to raise into like the perfect man like what exactly is going on in this relationship because it's getting weird <laughs> like it's been weird but it's getting weirder <laughs> And speaking of red flags, we head over to Caroline Brooks' house where she's getting dinner ready with her housekeeper, Sarah. She's going to have Brian and Adam, her two friends from Boston, come over so they can meet Sarah. Not Sarah the housekeeper, but Sarah the housewife. So they can meet because Sarah, she wasn't at the pool party and she wants them to all meet. So then this was the red, the first red flag right here when she told Sarah, her housekeeper, oh, Sarah, you know, I'm going to have my other friend, Sarah, not you. And I'm just like... 
was that supposed to be funny? That was not funny, Caroline Brooks. And I'm trying to take this scene with a grain of salt because as I said a couple of episodes ago, she messaged me personally and she explained herself about that scene when I mentioned in my review a couple of episodes ago when I first saw her interaction with Sarah and she was just like, Sarah, give me this. Sarah, give me that. Sarah, give me this. Caroline Brooks, she messaged me and she said, you know, I, I saw that scene and I took that in and everything. And that's just the way I talk. I saw that, you know, seeing myself on TV, moving forward, I'm going to talk differently. I'm going to talk a little bit nicer to Sarah and she is love. So I'm trying to take this scene with a grain of salt and trying to see like, okay, Caroline Brooks, maybe she saw herself now and she's not like this anymore. But I mean, still seeing it, it's still hard to watch because I'm like, she didn't even do anything to you. And that was not funny. But okay, so let's continue because it just goes downhill from here. So then Brian and Adam, they show up, they're looking around the house and they're like, wow, this is a nice weekend house for you. There's a bunch of pictures of Caroline all over. And they're like, so where's Adam? Like, where's pictures of him? She's like, oh, they're in his room. And I'm just like, oh, okay, not even one picture of him or you two together like in the living room or anything nothing okay that's concerning but then sarah she shows up they sit down at the dinner table adam her son he's also at the dinner table they're all eating it's kind of awkward too i'm just like can we not hear the i, I cannot stand hearing the noises of like the plate like the uh, forks and everything like hitting the plates like that noise drives me crazy <laughs> So then I believe Caroline Brooks, she was acting very, very awkward. It's almost as if she wanted her son to answer her questions a certain way because she was like, oh, so Adam, I, I, what kind of job are you going to get when you, when you grow up? Like, what kind of job are you going to get to get mommy a new Ferrari? answer correctly answer correctly like she was just waiting for a certain specific answer that she probably wanted him to say but he was just like oh i don't i don't know yet i'm not sure what i'm gonna get yet i'm not sure so then he was she was also like so adam how crazy do you think that mommy is and he was just like um probably like a two out of ten on a you know on a scale from one to ten and she was just like oh okay i'm not really sure if she was bothered by that or not i'm like uh okay what was it with the face expressions again it got really awkward it was just very tense right i'm like uh can we enjoy dinner <laughs> so then this is where it also got weird she asked adam she was like adam do you want um do you want your uh, steak cut up or something like do you want mommy to cut your steak and he was just like yeah i want mommy to cut my steak and what does she do sarah um can you go and get his plate and cut his steak and i'm like I, I, I'm not understanding what's going on here like <laughs> so then Sarah goes over to cut up his steak and I'm like okay so I guess you just asked your son that for no reason right I'm like okay whatever so then she tells uh her son Adam again she was just like okay so now that you're done eating go upstairs you know I'll be up there in a second with you to tuck you in or whatever so he goes upstairs he says goodbye to everybody he gives Sarah a hug he goes up the stairs right so once he disappears she tells Sarah Caroline Brooks she tells Sarah not the housewife but the housekeeper she's like Sarah can you go upstairs and check up on him and I'm like uh, again, what's with these broken promises, promises? <laughs> And my Keely from 3LW voice, like, what is going on here, Caroline Brooks? Like, what's happening? Like, what's the problem? I don't understand it. So they go upstairs. So then next thing you know, they have a conversation about uh, boarding school. And Caroline Brooks is just like, so Sarah, what do you think about boarding school? Like, what is your opinion on it? Sarah, she was just like, well, I mean, my opinion is just like, I feel like it's just for parents who have excuses for not taking care of their children, who have no time for their children and just want to send them away. Like anybody could send away their, you know, to, uh, their child to a camp or whatever for like two weeks if they really wanted to learn something or to experience something fun or something new. But boarding school is just so unnecessary and I just don't agree with it. Caroline Brooks, she was triggered about it and you could tell in her face expression, like she was like, huh? Okay, like you could tell that she wanted to just tell Sarah, no, that's complete BS. I don't agree with that. Like she was trying to control herself. And I'm like, okay, Caroline Brooks, you can't get upset or feel some type of way when you ask her for your opinion. This is why me personally, I always tell people, do you really want my opinion? Because I'm not going to give you what you want to hear. <laughs> Like, it's just never going to happen. Like, you're always going to expect the complete opposite. So then next thing you know, Sarah, this is where she kind of fucked up. And this is where, I, I mean, I could kind of see both sides, both Sarah and Caroline Brooks, because Sarah, I, you, like, you overstepped your boundary just a little bit by saying, oh, Caroline Brooks, can I say something about you? I mean, I don't know Adam, but can I say something about how you and your relationship with him? Caroline uh, Brooks, you could tell that like the, the wheels were turning in her head, like, wait a minute, you're about to say something offensive or something that you're about to cross the line and that's going to set me off, so stop it. So she should have just said, no, I'd rather you not say it, mind your business, you don't know Adam. That's what she said. She said, you don't know Adam. I wish she would have just said, mind your business, no, I don't need to hear it. But no, she allowed it. So I'm like, okay, well, here we go. So she tells Sarah, Sarah, it's fine. It's okay. Tell me what, what's the problem. So then Sarah, she was just like, I just feel like you and you need to be a little bit more affectionate with your son, Adam. And I'm just like, oh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I mean, again, I'm, I'm torn about it because at the same time, 
Is she wrong? No, she's not wrong because Caroline Brooks, she does come off a little bit cold hearted, especially with her friends. I mean, look how she treats Ion. Her and Ion are supposed to be friends, but yet she's always talking shit about her all the time in the confessional. So, I mean, I'm not understanding. And then from the little interaction that we got from her here at this dinner table and how strange she was acting towards Adam, yeah, it could come off a little bit cold hearted, especially how she went off uh, later on after she uh, responded to Sarah. I'm not understanding why I'm supposed to be affectionate to him. Like, I am affectionate. I am affectionate to him, Sarah. And again, she was getting more and more defensive. And then Brian, her friend, he jumped in and he made it no better either because he was just like, well, I mean, I kind of agree with Sarah. Um, Caroline, I kind of agree with her. I mean, honestly, I feel like your son will be much better if he spent time with Sarah. And I'm like, oh, Brian, you don't say that. Like, <laughs> like you could have worded it maybe a little bit different, but that right there, of course, is going to set anybody off. Like, you don't say, oh, your son deserves to be with another woman, another mom. Like, no, of course, as a parent, you're going to get upset about it, but... Again, it was also Caroline Brooks' fault for allowing this conversation to go on. If she didn't want to hear it, she should have just said, no, Sarah, mind your business. But no, she allowed it. So Brian, he added his two cents in. And then that's when Caroline went on off on Brian. And she was just like, look, shut the fuck up. Because now you're acting cute. You're trying to act cute and I'm not going to allow it. You shut the fuck up. But Sarah, you also shut the fuck up. <laughs> That entire table would have been flipped upside down and she would have had to go and buy new furniture again because absolutely not. You're going to tell me to shut the fuck up? No. And you and I had to fly in, what, like a 12-hour, 24-hour flight in from Boston to uh, Dubai to get disrespected by you? Absolutely not. And we're supposed to be childhood friends? Absolutely not. Like, it's just not happening. <laughs> Like the second that she would have been like, shut, like you didn't, you didn't even have to finish the sentence and it would have been on. <laughs> so then she went off on Sarah. She was just like, no, no, like it's not happening. Like the way you're talking to me right now about me being a mom, it's just not happening because my mom, she raised me in my culture. And then that's, that's the other part too, that I also agree with Sarah. Sarah was just like, um, you know, I get that, you know, your mom and your parents, they raised you a certain way, but I just feel like what, what was it? The quote that she said, you're bleeding on to, uh, you're bleeding onto the person that didn't cut you. Something like that. I'm like, Ooh, Sarah, that was good. She probably Googled it right before she got into the house. <laughs> I kind of agreed because even for me, I tried to uh, break certain uh, things, uh, certain cycles in my life or in my pattern or in my behavior that I see in my parents that were not good. So I feel like Caroline Brooks, she's not noticing that about herself because her behavior towards her son, it is a little sketchy, you know, again, and I'm just judging from the, the little five minutes that we saw from her son here and there. I'm not sure how she is as a mom. I'm pretty sure that she's a good mom as well. It's just, you know, we all have our moments. I'm not going to say that she's a terrible mom either, but you know, again, from what we saw, it was pretty cringy and Caroline Brooks, Brooks, she's not accepting that. She was just like, no, my son is not going to eat with his fingers out of food, like no matter how uh, young he is. And I'm just like, is it really that serious though? I mean, like, it's just a kid. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, all the kids eat with their fingers. They all get messy. So what, if they make a mess or if they, you know, put ketchup all over their clothes or whatever, are you going to be upset with Adam? Like, are you going to be upset if he comes home and he's dirty or something because he got dirty at school? Are you going to be upset at that too? Like, it's just not that serious. So Caroline Brooks, yeah, your mom may have raised you a certain way. And yeah, it may have been because of your culture. But, you know, again, not everything in everybody's culture is, is positive. And again, I say that from my experience as well. Not everything that my parents know or have learned as well is positive either. And I'm trying to break that in my own life as well. And I just feel like sometimes in life you have to do that. And, you know, in this case, you also have to do it as well. Brian, he's also trying to add more, more of his two cents in. He added four more cents. <laughs> He's just like, well, I just feel like you're not going to realize your behavior towards Adam until you get older and you're a grandma. That's when you're really going to realize that, you know, your son, all you're going to care about is his morals. Not if he was eating with his hands at a young age. And why did he why did he even tell Caroline that? Because she was like, no, what you're not going to do is disrespect me in my own fucking house. You're not going to do that. You're acting really cute. You need to shut the fuck up. And I'm just like, it's just it's, it's, it's no way. No way. Just it's just no way. <laughs> Like, absolutely not. Again, no, 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 absolutely not. You are not going to tell me to shut the fuck up in my own house. And yes, yeah, she said it, I believe, on Twitter that her and her uh, friend, uh, Brian, they always interact like this. But no, because that was your excuse with Ion. Oh, me and Ion, we always fight every day, every single day, blah, blah, blah. That's just us. And now you're also saying that about him? So how many people in your life, Caroline Brooks, do you fight on a regular basis that it's just regular to you? Like, that's really concerning. And it's really toxic. Something is not adding up here. Sarah it's just like, no, 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 Caroline Brooks, don't tell him to shut the fuck up. Like, stop. It's really not that serious. Caroline, she told her to shut the fuck up again. <laughs> but notice how I believe Adam, he was quiet. He was just like, uh, uh, Sarah, can you pass the peas? <laughs> He 
didn't say shit. He didn't want any type of fire coming from Caroline Brooks. He's the only one that stayed safe out of it. So Caroline Brooks just lost complete control of herself. And if she didn't want to have this conversation about her and her son's relationship or have anybody else's judgment on it, she should have just told Sarah. No, the second that she even said, can I just tell you something about you and your son's relationship, even though I don't really know him that much, you knew that it was going to go off right there. And you should have just said, no, I respect what you're about to say, but no, let's just not have that conversation right now because you're going to get me upset. You allowed it and look, you allowed it to get underneath your skin probably because you knew that something that Sarah was saying was probably some type of truth behind this. So it's just pretty unfortunate, Caroline Brooks, because whoo. And then on top of that, on Twitter, she says that next week's episode is going to get much, much, much worse than this. So, I mean, just be prepared for that. But what do y'all think? Do y'all think that Caroline Brooks went off the rails too much? Do you think that her friend uh, Brian and Sarah, they had a reason to say what they said to her face about what they said about her parenting skills? What do y'all think in this whole situation? Let me know what y'all thought about this entire episode down in the comments. Bye, everybody. Mwah.